Good afternoon. Well, let's try that again. Good afternoon. Okay. I, I, I want to begin first uh, by thanking the 14 members of the student committee for inviting me to be part of this new initiative, Rensselaer Talks. I, I especially want to thank uh, committee member uh, Connor Fennell, uh, a former student of my introductory course on Afro-Cuban percussion, for reaching out to me uh, to be part of uh, this event. And I, and I applaud the support of the Rensselaer Union Speakers Forum, Phalanx Honor Society, and the Rensselaer Alumni Association. Uh, please know that I am truly, truly humbled uh, by this invitation, and especially the honor of being included in the company of such an illustrious group of Rensselaer scholars and, and leaders. Now, I don't know who decided to have me speak after them, but I'll just take this moment to extend a word of thanks for no pressure, okay? <laughs> I mean, I've been asked to speak about understanding ourselves and the world around us through the, the lens of connecting with the rhythms of our mind, body, and spirit. And in essence, I've been asked to share a personal philosophy that has developed over many years and serves to guide my work, my service to students, and the world beyond Rensselaer. For almost 50 years, I've been a student of African, Afro-Cuban, and New World percussion. And this, this academic and artistic journey has infused my inner being with a sense of the importance of connecting with the rhythms of my mind, the rhythms of my body, and the rhythms of my spirit. And this connection has spilled over into my work with students as an artist educator, and I've come to realize that helping students get in touch with the rhythms of their lives is an important window into facilitating their understanding of how they approach their being as individuals and as members of an intellectual community and beyond. So the focus of this talk is on sharing my perspective about the significance of rhythms in your daily lives and the importance of not only connecting with those rhythms, but also enhancing and elevating their presence in what you do in your different fields of endeavor and in your lives overall. So what is rhythm? What is rhythm? Well, for me, in very simplistic terms, it is any regular recurring motion. It is movement marked by the regulated succession of strong and weak beats. I tell students in my introductory course that at the Afro-Cubans call this succession of strong and weak elements or beats the clave. Anybody heard that term in here? Raise your hand. The clave. Okay, the clave. So for them, the clave is, des is defined as a succession of two weak beats followed by three strong beats or three strong beats followed by two weak beats. Now, let me demonstrate. Three, two, clave. Join me. That's good, that's good. All right, now two, three, clave. Two strong beats, three weak. Okay, all right. You're on your way to getting an A in my A in my class. That's very good. Okay. But what I've just demonstrated with your help is that this is the nexus for just about all Afro-Cuban Latin and salsa music, the clave in 2-3 two, three, or 3-2. Three, but let me continue with a fundamental question. How many of you don't think you have any rhythm? A show of hands, please. We're among friends here. If you feel that way, raise your hand. Okay? I mean, I have students who come into my class and say, Professor, I took your course because I have no rhythm. Okay? All right? 
Now, how many of you think you have rhythm? A show of hands. Okay, there can't be any abstentions in this now. Okay? All right. Now, you know, what I'd really like you to do is to take your hand right now, place it over your heart. Place it over your heart. Now, do you feel anything beating? How many of you feel something beating? Because if you don't, we better call RPI ambulance immediately. <laughs> okay? My, my point is that your heart, your heart is, is beating. It represents the nexus of the rhythm that's in your body and the source of life. And what I'm saying is that all of us have rhythm. All of us have rhythm. But we are not all connected to the rhythms of our mind, the rhythms of our body, and the rhythms of our spirit that enable us to manifest our full potential. I learned through the study of the drum, the first instrument, before there was iPhone, cell phone, AT&T, Bell Labs. The first instrument played by human beings on the planet Earth, that it is a medium through which we're able to develop a strong connection to rhythm, whether it's external or internal. I learned through the study of other cultures the intrinsic value and use of the drum to channel rhythm to heal, to heal, to call on the higher forces, or as some like to say God, connect people with other people, and the list just goes on and on. I learned over time that we already live with certain rhythms, but more than often, many of us have not developed a deeper connection with those rhythms of the body, mind, and spirit that have the capacity to help us elevate the quality of our lives, the creativity that is within us, and the ability to be real change agents in our world, no matter what the size of that world happens to be. Let me continue here to, by giving you a clearer example if you're having trouble following me. In teaching my introductory course in Afro-Cuban percussion, it is customary for me to explain to students at the beginning of the course that there will be moments where they, when they will not be able to identify the downbeat in the rhythm. You know what I mean by downbeat? Do you know what I mean by downbeat? Let, 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 me, let me demonstrate uh, with your help, okay? But just before we begin with the demonstration, downbeat is what we do when we're listening to music, you know? We pop our fingers, right? We listen to the music, sounds good, we pat our foot. That's the downbeat, okay? So I'm going to sing a song, but I'm going to sing the chorus of this song. It's one that's well known. Uh, Stevie Wonder wrote it as a tribute to Martin Luther King in celebration of his birthday. So I'm going to sing the chorus. And what I want you to do is to clap the downbeat to the song. Everybody with me? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause. All right. Okay, now, I want you to clap the downbeat to this song. I go, I go. I go, I go. I go, I go. I go, I go. I go, I go, ya. I go, I go, ya. A little different, huh? Okay, so a little harder to d discern where that downbeat is, right? Let me do it again, and I'll help you with the downbeat. I go, I go. I go, I go. I go, I go.
Okay. <laughs> that was uh, a little bit different, okay? The downbeat was a different time signature, a different clave, a different clave than we live in. And my point is that I've learned as a musician that most of us born in this country live our daily lives in what is called 4-4 four, four time. You know, the good example of that was I started singing the tune to Martin Luther King on his birthday, happy birthday, and you all, without any instruction from me, started clapping right in time. Why? Because that's the tune that's in 4-4 four, four time. When we hear rhythm and blues in this country, many of the pop tunes, and especially hip-hop, we can tap our feet or clap our hands without even thinking about it. Why? Because we've grown up listening to it and we've been guided by it in the messaging that comes to us via, via various media and especially in music. It is part of our daily DNA. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to think about it. I dare say we often have trouble connecting to the other to the rhythms of other cultures because we don't live, we don't live in their life rhythms as expressed in their music, the way they speak, their language, how they walk, dance, pray, you name it. That's not a criticism, criticism, it's just a fact. But becoming aware and getting in touch with this fact is the first step to being open to the possibility of receiving and embracing other rhythms and other people. But back to the rhythms of the mind, body, and spirit. When I speak about the mind, I'm talking about the cognitive processing and your ability to develop rhythmic patterns in your way of thinking about things, perception of things, conscious and unconscious adaptive mental activity. For instance, and, and, and Professor Winter's examples were great earlier, going with the flow of an idea or a concept has led people to do what? Innovation and discovery. Being in touch with how you think about thinking is all about the rhythm of the mind. I'm gonna say that again. Being in touch with how you think about thinking is all about the rhythm of the mind. The rhythm of the body is about unleashing the senses and getting beyond you in order to connect with the body's rhythms. I tell my students every semester to leave you at the door when you come to class and open yourself to letting the rhythm in and send it back out through the instruments you're gonna to learn to play. Getting beyond you, getting out of the way, getting you out of the way so you can let the rhythms into your body. Allow yourself, your body, to become the rhythm. The rhythm in the spirit is your connection to the universe external to you. The forces of nature, the sky, the moon, the stars, tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it. The notion of being able to feel that which you may not be able to see, but are able to sense because of the messages being received in your mind and your body. In certain religious traditions, people are able to enter states of transpossession and receive messages from higher forces of nature or God. I am not saying that you have to be religious or experience transpossession. I am saying that there exists within each of us rhythmic connections that is capable of propelling your spirit to soar. And for you to experience feelings that are healing that make you feel better about self, that make you feel capable of excelling beyond what you normally imagine, spirit that takes you to a higher level of being. In the universe of folkloric drummers, there's a deep awareness of the power of certain rhythms to draw down the spirit and to change the energy within a community for positive outcomes. So in the interest of time, and I'm going to be mindful of that, because you've been sitting here for quite a while. So I'm going to close by proposing that you make your own taste test about what I've outlined and let me know what you experience. 
Begin by opening yourselves up to the significance of music and rhythm in your daily lives. If you have an instrument, play it. If you don't, then sing, because your voice is a powerful instrument. Trust me, this is a window into connecting with the rhythms of your mind, body, and your spirit. So let me close by sharing some rhythms that emanate from my mind, that transmit through my body, and become manifest by the spirit invoked in me, and hopefully you. to join me if you know where the downbeat is clapping.
Last time.